Welcome to the Blessed Hope. Uh, this ministry is by our family. Every night we go through a particular part of the Bible as we study. We, as a family, are inviting you into our study. That the Bible says, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. I do these studies with my family so they can grow in the Lord, so they can know the Lord through the Word of God, by the Word of God, of the Word of God. It's the very importance. And we invite you to listen, to share, to learn with us too, the Word of God. We ask that you uh, share these, to give full liberty of sharing to your friends, to your family. We ask that you use these videos for the edification of the Lord Jesus Christ, and that you abuse not these videos. They are to work for the Lord Jesus Christ, for edification, for growth. We thank you. Jude. Another book of the Bible that's very strong. Probably not preached. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ. Next book is Revelation. Everybody loves Revelation. I wonder if they know about Jude. A brother of James. Now, that's not James, the brother of uh, uh, John. Now, this could be the James. That the, the, there's another disciple named James. But he's a brother of James. To them that are sanctified by God the Father, saved Christians, and preserved in Jesus Christ. Now, preserved, that's an interesting term. That term is represented by taking fruit and putting them up and canning them. You put them in jars. And they stay fresh. Preserved. I'm not going to die. They take a dead body and they put stuff into that dead body so it don't stink. You can have a wake. It takes a while for it to decay. That's kind of preserving a, a, a body. But preserving is keeping alive. It's the assurance of the believer's full conviction that through the work of Christ alone, through the faith, I am God by Jesus Christ. And called. When a man trusts Christ as his Savior, then God reaches down and says, okay, here's the book, start reading. And as you read the Bible, you start seeing, well, you know what, I'm not supposed to do this. I'm not supposed to do that. I'm supposed to go tell people about Jesus. I'm supposed to pray. That's our calling. Everybody, oh, I want to know what the will of God is in my life. Read the Bible, you'll find out. Mercy unto you. Everybody needs mercy, especially Christians. And peace. Well, that's the fruit of the Spirit. Peace. It's not the kind of peace that the world can get, Jesus said. And love. And we saw that in 1 John. That love of God. Be multiplied. Much more than needed. Plus. In persecution. In the times of these disciples sent out. The time of persecution, may God show you mercy and peace, even amongst the persecution, and love. Someone loves you. Be multiplied. Beloved, same way John dresses Christians. Beloved, I'm beloved by God. I'm supposed to be beloved by Christians. I find that one very few. I'm not saying none. There are Christians that love. And then there's other Christians. When I gave all diligence, that means you made sure, you confirmed, you checked, you double checked, to write unto you of the common salvation. Now what's the common salvation? Let me bring it down to this. One religion says if I eat Jesus... And I go into a little booth and, and the priest tells me to make prayers. Another one says that Jesus is not God. Go out and peddle our merchandise to door to door. Another one says if I marry multiple wives and make babies, we can fill their bodies with gods from outer space. 
Another one says we're not like the people that eat Jesus, but we still have the same sacraments minus a couple of them. But, you know, we're a different religion. Another one says, well, of water you're saved. Another one says of works. You know, if you do this, do that, do this, you can be saved. Another one says if you join our church. Matter of fact, not only do you join our church, but we are the church of all the churches. And everybody else just gets to be the, the you know, the, the guests of the bride. Unless you belong to our denomination. Wait a minute. Why are there so many different ways of salvation? What is Jude talking about when he says common salvation? When you get men and women gathered together and they are born again by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, the gospel that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures as we found in Romans, as we found in Corinthians, as we found in, in the epistles of uh, uh, Ephesians, Titus, Peter. That's the common salvation. There is one salvation among believers by Jesus Christ. Those that are sanctified by God and preserved by Jesus Christ. That's the common salvation. There are others. There was a salvation in the Bible of works and law, but that's not no more for now. It was needful for me to write unto you. So here's another one. We said in, in Second and Third John, I'm going to come and see you. I'm going to talk face to face. But in case something happens, I'm going to put this in words. I'm going to send it off before me. So you get this important warning. Jude's like, hey, I got to get this down. I got to write this down because of the warning. And it's the 65th book of our Bible. So the Holy Spirit says, listen, it's needful for me to write unto you and exhort you. So the Bible says that pastors, preachers, evangelists are given for ex extorting, ex yeah, exhorting, for learning. That ye should earnestly contend for the faith. That's that common salvation. We're to fight. Why else would God give us armor? Why else would God stand, say, you're a soldier? Stand on the battlefield. Why would God tell you, stand, don't sit? We're to contend, we're to stand up. You treated those Jehovah Witnesses very rude Saturday. Oh, I'm contending for the faith of Jesus Christ. I am not going to allow people who deceive others to stand in my way. That's a Bible command, which was once delivered unto the saints. Once delivered unto the saints. What's going on? People slacking off? All right, here we go. For there are certain men crept in unawares. Crept in what? Church. The church. They catch you off guard. They're slick. They're subdued. They're a wedge. You know what you do with a wedge? You got a log you want to split. You take a wedge. It's a triangle with a very fine point. You put that on the on the log and you give it a couple pallets. Then you take the axe or hammer, sledgehammer you got, and you just start ramming it. And you start ramming. Eventually, that wedge that starts off with a little hole gets bigger. Gets bigger, gets bigger, and then you know what? You now have two halves of a log. No matter how big that log was, you got two of them. No matter how long that log was, no matter what kind of wood that is, a wedge divides. That's what these people are. They're crept in unawares. So they are being allowed in the church, and no one has no idea what they're doing. How's that sound? Who were before of old ordained how's well, that you're ordained Paul said, said to Timothy don't lay hands on any man suddenly to this con condemnation also this, there's an ordained to condemnation I guess that would be in 2nd Corinthians 11 those ministers that are of Satan are they ordained yes ordained to this condemnation damnation it's not good ungodly men so they're not saved 
and they're in the church. And no one has any idea what they're doing, and yes, they have ordained papers of Satan. Turning the grace of our God, Jesus Christ, Jesus saves, once saved, you will always be saved. You'll have eternal salvation. You are sealed. You become a child of the Father, God, into lasciviousness. Uh-oh. They turn the grace to filthy works and money. I think you've seen that happen in 2017. Somewhere in your life you've seen this. these people work. Television and radio. And I've seen churches. Heard about churches. Know of churches. And watch this. And denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. They are false teachers. Why were they allowed to creep in the church unawares? Why was someone did not catch these people? It should have been the pastor's job. Deny the Lord God, deny the Lord Jesus. That looks like the Jehovah Witnesses who say Jesus is not God and God is not Jesus. But the Mormons say that there's another Jesus that came to North America. The Catholics say there's another Jesus that's still under the thumb of his mother. There's the Muhammad Jesus, you know, he's just a good prophet. Fill in the blanks. You watch with the next few years, Baptist churches to be nice and kind will be inviting in Islam and Muhammadans into the churches to be nice to them. You watch. They're invited in the Sodomites when the Bible clearly says that they are an abomination. Oh, we'll marry you in our church. The Bible says that a preacherette, a woman preacher, is an abomination. We have Mrs. Preacher such. And boy, can she preach 28 day, 28 day. Where the Bible, listen, they're already saying the Bible is wrong. They're correcting the Bible. They don't care about the Bible. That's who the people were talking about. These people have crept in with modern Bible. They have sneakily removed words. And, and like I said, they even done it to the King James Bible in Acts chapter 7 with Jesus and Joshua. That was a nice little trick that these men did under Satan. I would have never known that except for listening to the classes when I went to school for the Bible that one student raised his hand and said, uh, Pastor... My Bible did not say that. And that whole discussion, that whole thing went all about that one thing, because it is true. I will, therefore, put you in remembrance, that's what Peter kept saying, remembrance, that ye once knew this. You ought to know this. Every single person who has written in the Bible, these letters about these deceivers are going all out. This seems to be the, the top, 10 of the epistles of the discussions of the messages that are being preached to these new converts and those that are growing in the Lord there are people out there going to fool you they are going to deceive you if you give them opportunity Jesus spoke of it it's found in the Old Testament Paul speaks about it Peter speaks about it Jude speaking about it John spoke about it second John is all about these people and we are given such warnings. John says, don't even fight them in your house and don't wish them a good day. I therefore put you remember though ye once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, all right, that's the Jews. They came out of Egypt. That story is found in Exodus. Jude says the book of Exodus was a true story. How's that? Destroy them that believe not. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. So, what we're looking at is people that came out of Exodus. They came out. They passed overnight. They left. They went with the nation of Israel. 
And yet there were people that God passed judgment and they never got in the promised land. They never did right because there were people in that congregation that were not saved. I mean, according to the law, according to that dispensation of those Jews coming up, they came out, they followed, but they were not of that group of people. And God judged them. Not everybody that came out of Egypt is in well, it's not Abraham's bosom no more. You're not going to find everybody that was in that journey. You're not going to find all of them in, in heaven. Like the church age today. If the rapture would happen. Do you realize how, if, let's, say the, let's say the rapture happened on Sunday morning. And I don't know what the time zone is. But is there a possibility that every time zone that somebody could be in church somewhere? Something like Japan and China, which are a whole different day. Well, let's say, let's say the time zone of Sunday and from, from starting church in the time zone to almost church is ending. I don't know how many time zones that would be in. And the rapture happened at that moment. Do you realize how many people would still be sitting in the church? Where'd they go? They wouldn't even know what happened because their preacher ain't teaching. There would be some churches in those time zones that nobody would disappear out of that church. And they wouldn't have the foggiest idea So they got in the car and turned the radio on. The news would be panicky. People are disappearing all over the place. And they still would not know. If the rapture would be happening in your church, I guarantee not everybody in your church will go. There will be people left behind. Oh, they think they're saved, and that's a whole different story. Jesus said, I never knew you. But not everybody that came out of Egypt were right with God. And Jews were the chosen people. So a gentleman asked me, I'm glad I heard this, but if he asked me again, I learned afterward. Do Jews go to hell? According to Jude chapter, chapter Jude 5, those that came out of Egypt, Jews are in hell, some of them, because they believe not in all the places we read about that 40 years. And then the Egyptians that came out, they say one place, even, you know, those that, well, we'll get it. All right, verse 6. So don't think everybody's going to heaven. Rule that thought out. If that's one thing you get, not everybody goes to heaven. There are some people who have called on the Lord that say they're saved. And Jesus said, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Get that. The angels, all right, these, these are people who can't be saved. They are created beings. The Jews in Egypt, God said, you put the blood over that doorpost. When I see the blood, I'll pass over you. And at midnight, when I tell you to leave, you leave. All right, they were given options. They, couldn't, they, they didn't put the blood, there was death. And still, they that got out, still, still some did not get salvation. Angels. Angels can never be redeemed. And the angels which kept not their first estate. That's their salvation. What's their first estate? They are angels to glorify God and Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit before the throne. That was their salvation. How did they lose their salvation? They followed Satan. And there's still a third of them that are in heaven right now that will be cast out, according to Revelation. So, a reversal in heaven. All the angels that are there right now, when we're raptured, and after the judgment seat, we will be in heaven. We will see God. We will see the cherubim. We'll see the 24 elders. We will see all each other. We will see multitudes of multitudes of multitudes of angels. Guess what? A third of those angels we see will not be there in New Jerusalem. They'll be in a lake of fire. Because Satan in the book of Revelation will take a third of them and be cast down to the earth. So not all the angels in heaven are saved. Isn't that interesting? But everybody says, just because you go to church, you're saved. These are people that crept in unawares. Jude is saying they're not all saved in your church. Those are the ones that are going to be the troublemakers. Especially if they speak up and try to get a crowd and try to split the church. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation. Heaven. 
There are some angels that on their own they left. They're going to be drawn out later, a third of them. But they, they went on their own. He, God, has reserved in everlasting chains unto dark. We read Revelation 19 that Jesus takes a hold of Satan and bounds him with chains. According to this passage right here, when he is bound for a, mil for a thousand years, almost said million, be better with a million. A thousand years. When he is tied with that chain, there's going to be angels sitting there with him. And unlike Paul and Silas, they're not going to be singing praises to God. And the jailer who is chained is not going to get saved. There are angels right now that are chained in hell. There are angels right now of you saw them all through the ministry of Jesus. That they are, they are saved, they are unclean spirit, they are devils, they are of the devil, and they're running around right now pretending to be Mary. Pretending to be Moroni. Or pretending to be Gabriel. Pretending to be Michael. Pretending to be Jesus himself. And there are third angels right now that are in heaven, and they're not going to be there. What do some of these angels do? They started up getting people to follow religions. I've seen an angel in this religion start. I saw these vision of an angel in this in the religion start. What happened in Egypt when they came out? There was one time they, they gathered a group of people and they were going to go back to Egypt, the Bible said. They found a captain. They were going to go back. They went up to, we're going to see in a moment. There was a group of them that went to Moses and said, we do not honor your authority. There was a group of people that the ground opened up. The ground opened up and swallowed an entire group of people, families. And the ground closed back up. And there were people who went to Moses. Why did you kill those people? Moses had no control. There were people that were in that group of Jews that ruined those Jews' testimony and angered God. There are angels that are ruining people today that's angering God. There are people amongst Christians in the church. They're not saved, but they are in the church. They don't belong in the church, and they have ruined the church. They have ruined Christians. They have devised the church into splitting, and God's not happy. That's what Jude says. Now, if you think it, just the earth it showed up in, in heaven with the angels. Imagine an angel turning away from God. I've never seen God. They have everlasting chains unto darkness, unto the judgment of that great day, the great white throne judgment. And you know what Paul said? We shall judge angels. Here they are. And the third that Satan takes out, and all the devils and the angels are running around right now doing their fall. We will judge them angels. Why? Because they saw God. I never saw God. They did not keep their faith in God. I kept my faith in God even though I never saw him. I got greater faith than the angels in heaven. Angels cannot be bought by the blood of Jesus Christ. I can. And when somebody comes up to you and they say, Judge not me, she be judge. Hey, sister, I'm going to judge angels. You won't. And my God will judge you if you don't get correct and get right. Likewise, also these filth, oh wait a minute, verse 7, can't leave out verse 7, even as Sodom and Gomorrah, well we all know about them in America, Ooh. but we don't know what, what the Jer the Jeremiah or Ezekiel says about the pride of America in Sodom and Gomorrah, much bread, much idleness. And the cities about them, not only Sodom and Gomorrah, were destroyed. I think there were five cities all in total. And Ezekiel, I believe, gives us the, the names of those cities and the sin. Ezekiel 16.48. Check that out. In like manner, giving themselves over to fornication, America. And going after strange flesh, well, that's caused a lot of different strange flesh, man with man, woman with woman, or like you saw the angels in Genesis 5, 6, was it? Daniel and Daniel speaks of it. So it could be Sodomite, it could be even those angels that came down in Genesis 5. 
sons of God. Though some people don't believe that and say it's it's the children of Cain. Yeah, basketball players uh, tower the basketball hoops. Yeah, she used that, but. <laughs> Going after strange flesh and set forth for an example suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Instantly. Now we've moved from judgment. Egypt, those that were in Egypt, God destroyed them. The angels, God has put them in everlasting chains, and there's a great white throne judgment coming. Sodom, <coughs> he destroyed instantly. Brethren, Jude says not everybody will be saved. So somebody tells you and teaches you, and you hear somebody on, on YouTube or whatever, or walking, salvation will be brought to everybody in the end when God just tries us all out and everybody will get to go to heaven has never opened and read the book of Jude. Imagine a fornicating dope head against Jesus Christ. Hey Jude, hey, don't you know the Bible says you're going to hell. Blasphemy. Likewise, also these filthy dreamers. Go back to the certain men of verse 4. I got a dream. Be careful your dreams. Defile the flesh. Uh oh. We want to set up for this world, this country, that all people who want strange flesh should have their rights to the bathrooms, even though they don't know what they are. We just we just heard about today this drug that burns you. That defiles the flesh. People are killing each other. People are torturing each other. In America. Despise dominion. And speak evil of dignities. 1 Peter 2.17 Do you know a group of people who reach out and mock the government? Mock the leaders of the, of the country? Jude says that's wrong. That's a sign of these filthy people who crept in unawares, who have brought these doctrines into the church. Churches, you no, know, we can't have this guy, we gotta have this guy. And now our government's giving them the freedom to now tell you who you can vote for and not lose your tax status. Ooh. That kind of sounds like you know you're gonna speak against one candidate for the other candidate. I guess you'll do that more than you go out and preach the gospel. Yet Michael. Oh, here's an angel. The archangel. I believe this is the only archangel that's mentioned in the Bible. Even Gabriel's not mentioned as an archangel. What is an archangel? I can tell you exactly what an archangel is. It starts with an A-R-C-H-A-N-G-E-L. And he's no ordinary angel. How's that? You like that? And he's also, according to Daniel, he is the prince of the children of Israel. Now, Revelation 1, 2, 3, I don't know, 4, 1, 2, 3, said that there are angels over the different church ages. But Israel gets their own one angel. And then they had the angel of the Lord which protected them. And that angel of the Lord is Jesus Christ. So Michael the Archangel, even he's been stolen by religions. You know, they, they spoke, no, that's Gabriel, they got the feather up. When contending, wait a minute, wait a minute. All right, when contending with the devil, does that sound like they were having a tea party? All right, let's go back to see if I'm wrong, okay? Let's go back to verse 3 real quick. Beloved, when I gave you all Dylan should write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should should earnestly, there's that word, contend for the faith. Michael and Satan are having a talk of on. And it is not friendly. Satan walks up to Michael and says, you are not taking that body. I'll mess with you. Even though he doesn't know Revelation says Michael's going to kick his butt. I'm going to watch it. When disputed with the body of Moses, does not bring against him railing accusation. Now, 
Satan, I'll shoot you with a water gun and you tack the gates of hell with a fire hose. No. That old smutty face, no. Michael Dean in there with that. And Michael's going to kick Satan's butt. I think it's Revelation, yeah, Revelation 12. When, when Satan comes up to Michael, he's like, The Lord rebuke thee. Now get out of here. In the name of the Lord. Jesus had it out with Satan, Matthew 4, Luke 4, I think it is. And Jesus quoted the scripture right back to him, misquoted the scripture. And Michael says, listen, God sent me down here. God told me to do that. You got a problem? You go see God. I'm just doing what God told me to do. And he didn't say, get out of here. He said, the Lord rebuked thee. God rebuked thee. But these, going back to verse 4. So, likewise, these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignitary. In verse 10, but these speak evil of things which... And then right in the middle, we get Michael having contentions with the devil. What's all that about? These people are going to fight you if you're right. And they are on the side of Satan. God is going to tell you, Christian, go in all the world and preach the gospel. All right, now, Mark 4. The sower went out and sold the seed. What was the first thing that came to life after he went out with seed? Satan was there devouring the seed. The first thing. And all you can do, you can do the same thing that Michael... We got the we got prayer. Say, Lord God, these people are going to hell, and I know Satan's here because we are trying to preach your word faithfully. I know Satan's here. Lord Matthew, four, I mean Mark chapter four says Satan is here. I can't do nothing against him, Father, but I can just pray that the other three fruits, the three other seeds, can produce something here, Lord. I am not going to challenge Satan in my street ministry. He will rip my tie. He will rip me in pieces. He will bring me down and destroy me. And Ezekiel, I believe Ezekiel says, or is it Job? He says, do the battle, <laughs> fight the battle, and, I, and I'm not quoting this completely, and do it no more. I think that's Job. Let's talk about Leviathan. I'm not going to battle Satan. I'm not going to go with Satan with water guns. I'm not going to make fun of Satan. I'm going to say, God help me. Please. But these, verse 4, speak evil of those things which they know not. Ooh. You ever ask a Jehovah Witness what who Jesus really is? Do they know? No. Do the Mormons know that those names that are mentioned in their book are not names ever to be found in history? No, they don't. You know the true words of Muhammad are not known? There were other people that wrote down what he said, and it was years after he died, I'm told. But what they know naturally as brute beast, that, that's that's a you know, you you're just a disgusting animal. You're mean as a bear, as a leopard. In those things they corrupt themselves, not only the people and themselves. Because the more they damn, the more they're going to get damned. Woe unto them. For they have gone the way of Cain. Now Cain was the natural religious man who killed the right man of God. He's the one that came and had religion and said, God, I brought you the fruit of my hand. I brought you the works that I had. I even had miracle grow from my crop. Where's the fire? You burn his land and not mine? What on earth are you doing, God? Depart from me, Cain. I never knew you. Come here, Abel. I got to talk to you. And what did Cain do to his brother? He killed him. What are these people doing? They're killing. Run back to John 8:44. Of their father the devil a liar and a murderer 
You never hear anybody saying that these guys are being born of Satan. <laughs> like Cain, they say. Greedily, greedily. I didn't even know that was ever a word. Greedily. <laughs> After the heir of Balaam. He's against God. He is against God's word. And he's hired. Balaam. He's the heir of Balaam. Balaam. He has his way. 2 Peter 2.15. He has his doctrine. Revelation 2.14. The error of Balaam was that he reasoned with natural morality. In the in evil of Israel, he supported a righteous God must curse them, though God couldn't curse them because he gave them eternal blessing. And yet God opened the door saying, okay, let's see what you guys are going to do. And his idea was go meet with the women of the land. That's fornication. That's adultery. That's what God told Israel not to do. So, here we got two religious men. Cain, the works of his hands, and we got the, the doctrine, Revelation 2.14 of Balaam. Sounds like a religious organization. Do you know as we get closer and closer to the Antichrist, and I don't know if it's going to happen before the rapture, do you know that churches are going to start combining into churches, into churches, into one church? Do you think... Do you not think that when we are out of here as a church, that Satan will enjoy the free churches of Baptists to use them for his honor and glory? You know how many empty buildings he's going to have to be able to use for himself? He's going to love it. All that money, time, and effort to build that building, Satan's going to say, he's going to look up to heaven and say, thank you guys. <laughs> for reward. He was paid. Even though he told the king, he said, listen, I can't receive any money. He was paid for reward. What was his reward? He got fame. He got someone to applaud him. He got someone to speak about him. Some people want, it, want their name to be known. Some people want money. Somebody wants, there's some people that want big things. These are spots. I didn't. For reward. And perish in the gainsaying of Cory. Cory. Number 16. These are the sons of Cory that denial the authority of Moses. They walk right up to Moses and say, You are not of God. These people will walk up to a church and say that Jesus is not that God. Jesus is not the way, the truth, and the life. My religion is. I don't represent the authority of a country. We need a, my, our own. We want our own person in. Yeah, you're already wicked. So the person that you want, where you want him in authority, after your manner, after your liking, is already deceitful and already wicked. Why would you want somebody right in God's eyes when you're not? So we see Cain, Balaam, and Kor. That's not somebody you want to build a church on, but yet they're out there. Twelve, these are spots. And the Bible says that the church of Jesus Christ, the bride, is to be unspotted. And here they are spotting, 2 Peter 2.13. These deceivers are spots in your feast of charity. Fellowships. Talking about the church age. We're not talking about the law. We're not talking about the, the feast of tabernacles. We're not talking about the, the, uh, uh, the unleavened bread feast. We're talking about the church. Don't churches always say with fellowships, invite all your friends out? I had a church that, you know, after, that, after the Sunday morning service, we would have fellowship and there would be no Sunday evening service. And not once did the, did the pastor, the deacons, or the ushers of that church ever question what those people that came that were not part of that church. And I see more people show up for fellowships than I did, did for the church services. I even saw people come to the fellowship that were not in the church service that Sunday morning. And you're not going to question those people? 
Why are you here? You're asking for trouble. When they feast with you, eating and drinking and fellowship with you in the church. Your next church fellowship may have Cain, Balaam, or Kor sitting right there at the table. Maybe all three of them. Maybe two of the three. And you have no idea, unawares, what those people may do. And it's not going to happen overnight. It's going to be a little wedge. Feeding themselves without fear. They don't care about the pastor. They don't care about the people. They don't care about God. They are workers of Satan. God had to approach Cain about the death of his brother. And even then, Cain, he came up with an excuse that I'm not my brother's keeper. I don't care. What do you mean you're going to curse me, God? Uh, that's more than I can handle. You just killed somebody. And you're worried about a mark on you? A mark? A mark? A spot? That's the way of Cain. That's the way of Cain. Feed yourself without fear. Clouds they are without water. You know what that is? You look up in the sky and say, oh man, you know, Florida is burning. There are many fires in Florida right now. And we look up at those clouds, oh, we're going to get rain. Oh, the relief that we need. The rain, because our retention ponds are, are, are drying up. And you look at that cloud and it says, carry it about with wind. It just blows away and don't, and don't give no rain. Rain is a blessing from God. Rain is a beautiful thing. I thank the Lord for rain. But when clouds don't bring rain and you need it, they may be happy clouds, but they're not doing nothing. Trees who fruit withered. How's that? It's got fruit. Wherefore, by their fruits, you should know that these trees, they got fruit. You must realize, even Satan has fruit. So does his people. A Christian has fruit, both of bear fruit, so does Satan. Withered. Trees who fruit withered. It's dead fruit. You can't eat it. It died. Death. Without fruit twice. Dead. You come to the tree again. Maybe there's some good fruit. It's dead. It was withered. Now it's dead. Plucked up by the roots. You rip it out of the ground. Now the tree's totally dead. What are these people? They're dead fruit and they're dead now. Read Psalms chapter 1. Raging waves of the sea. Foaming out of their own shame. A storm. What's the storm really do for you? It causes fear. It destroys ships. It ruins the sea coast. It, it, it evolves the land. Wandering stars. You know, you see a shooting star? You know what the Bible says about stars? They're angels. You better watch out for the angel that just went across the sky. And what did they tell you when you see a shooting star? When you wish upon a star? Isn't somebody down south singing about that? Why wish upon a star when you can pray to the Creator? Somebody wants you to take your prayer life off God and put it on something else. To whom is reserved? You know what his reserve is? Hello, I like to make reservations for a room or for a table on such and such date. Party of four. I like to have it over by the window, or I like to have room number 478. You can call and make reservation. We tell the American natives, the Native American, this is your land, this is your reservation, you can't leave it. Or we're not going to help you no more. What little help the Americans did to the Native Americans. 
Reserve the blackness of darkness forever. And if you go back to over here in verse 6, that's the place where the angels end up. These people, if there's one thing known about them, they have a day. Verse 6, unto darkness, unto the judgment of that great day. They have the great white stone judgment coming, and they will be found guilty. And their names will not be in the land's book of life. They will be cast off in the lake of fire which burneth forever. But meanwhile, while they're living, look at the destruction they're doing. That Jesus, that Paul, that Peter, that John, that James has told us about. And now Jude. And Enoch also. The seventh from Adam. Prophesied of these, saying, now everybody's out there looking for Enoch's book. Now let me show you something. And this goes true with singing in the Bible. Does it say wrote or does it say saying? Saying. He did not write it down. Don't go look for his book. And the Holy Spirit told Jude, hey, write down Enoch said. Okay. The Holy Spirit knew full well what Enoch said and he's and now he's telling us. We got more information in Genesis, I mean Jude, than we do of Genesis by the Holy Spirit. James, Jude could not have known. And it'll be like people saying, well, the angels, they're singing in heaven right now. No, they say in heaven. There is no singing unto the book of Revelation in heaven. I'm finding that now in, the, in these hymns that I'm doing the study on. All right. Here, prophesied of these. So, Enoch was a prophet that was raptured. Christian, are you a prophet that's going to be raptured? Are you telling people what's going to happen in the future? Enoch's a type of church. One day he was there, the next minute he's gone. Behold the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints. Enoch believed in the second coming of Jesus Christ. Though he had never even seen the first coming of Jesus Christ. How do you know this is not the first coming? Did 10,000 saints show up at that uh, at that place where he was born in the manger? I don't think there was 10,000 uh, shepherds. There were not three wise men and they did not show up until he was at least two years old. So this is yet future prophecy. Watch this. To execute judgment. This is why he's coming. Upon all. And to convince all that are ungodly among them. Of all their ungodly deeds. Which they have ungodly committed. And of all their hard speeches. And which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Look at the ungodly, ungodly, ungodly. It's not going to be a happy time for the great white throne judgment for these people. And Enoch spoke this. And it says the all. That's not going to be the church age, scripture with scripture. Our judgment is the judgment seat of Christ, and we are gone at the rapture. When Jesus Christ comes back in the second advent, he's judging the ungodly. And if you're against God and his son, you don't want to see this happen. All right, what are these people? These are murmurers. Be careful about your murmuring. You are imitating these complainers. Be careful you're complaining. I know we all do it. We all do it. Don't you lie to me. I ain't lying to you. I've done it. Walking after their own lust. You know what lust is? You know what Paul said lust was? Was coveting. Oh, I gotta have that. Oh, if I only had that. Oh, I can't believe my neighbor's got that. I gotta get one just like it. See, when you see lust, you think of pornographic. It's not just pornographic. It's that, oh, that hamburger that that place is, oh. Oh, come on, honey. We gotta go out after, we gotta get one of them burgers. Doesn't that thing just look so good? And then you get there, you pay your 15 bucks for it, and you open it up like, it don't look like this. What the heck is this? 
believe me, I work for I work for one of those places, and I've seen many people. I saw that on television. I just had to get me. It don't look like it was on TV. Okay. Walking of their own lust and their mouths speaking great swelling words. Oh, turn to the TV on that one. They speak words that even the people in the congregation, even if they had a college ID, would not know what it was. Be careful if your preacher gets up there with big vocabulary words of the Latin, of the Hebrew, and of the Greek. Be careful. Having men's person in admiration. It's who you know. Because of advantage. They do it all so they can get an advantage over you. Like a man, like, like a young man in high school with that young lady, he'll do all he can do. What's the, what's the common expression? To get an advantage of her. Take advantage of her. But, beloved, after all this, this chastisement, all this hardness, beloved, we still love you. We don't love these people. We love you. We warn you. We want you to know about it. Remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. All right, here's what the apostles said. How, the, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time. People ridicule you. People make fun of you. Who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. I've seen those. Oh, I haven't met any of those people. Because you're not actually doing what God told you to do for not to see these people. I've seen people in verse 18 that are in churches. Bible churches. Baptist churches. You haven't met these people in your life unless you just got born again yesterday. You're not doing right. You follow this verse up with all they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. And like Peter says, don't suffer it stupidly. These be they who separate themselves. We can't have this kind of food. Don't hang out with those people. Don't read this stuff. Don't be invited to that church. Don't do this. Don't do that. Now there's a proper division in the Bible and a proper separ separation for God and for the Word and for Jesus Christ. But this is for lust. This is for murmuring. This is for complaining. This is for deceivers. This is for religion. We keep our people in a monastery. We keep them in, in a rectory. Ooh, what a bad name for Sensual, of the senses, of the flesh, that feels so good. That's the churches today. Having not the Spirit. They do not have the Holy Spirit. So your separation won't do nothing. It will not grant you nothing. Now, if you do have the Holy Spirit and you are saved, you are called to be separate. And if you don't be separate like the Bible says, you will lose rewards. You'll get fire and ashes. For your words. Not your soul. But your words. But ye. Beloved. Doing it again. He comforts them. He, he tells them about the hardships of life. And being a Christian. And those people. Beloved. Building up yourselves on the most holy faith. Being saved. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Encouraging them. Keep yourself in the love of God. Like John said. First John. Looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal. Now, what is that one right there? That's looking for the blessed hope and the glorious coming of the great God and saying, Jesus said, I hope he comes. Pray he comes. Look for his coming. That'll get your eyes off these people. And some have compassion, making a difference. There are some Christians out there with their love and their charity. They are, people are getting saved. People are getting right. People are doing what they're supposed to. They are doing and making God please because of another. I hope God will find that verse in my life somewhere. Verse 22. Of some having compassion, making a difference. These deceivers make a difference, but an ungodly difference. Psalms 86.15, Matthew 18.23. And others... Saved with fear, 
pulling them out of the fire. You know why I got saved? I did not want to go to hell. You know what that verse says right there? Others saved with fear. There are people that came to you, told you through the Bible what you need to be saved. They told you there was a hell fire. And because you feared God and did not want to go to hell, you got saved. And those people that preach hell did correct. With their compassion, they brought you the gospel and you acted upon it. You better thank that person. Hating even the garment spotted by the flood. You know, when you got saved, after you got saved, you should say, Ew, you know what, I'm a sinner. I feel so disgusted. I feel so unclean. Yeah, I'm saved. God, I'm sorry. I'm a sinner. If I confess my sin, it's not if. I'm going to confess my sins, God. Because someone loved me and brought me the gospel, and I did not want to go to hell. But now I know more. Now I have the Spirit. Now I'm growing. I'm sorry, Lord. I know I'm saved. I'm sorry. Look at verse 12. It said, these are spots in your feast of charity. And where, it said something about they don't care. They have no fear. Where was that? Somebody said it was, they have no fear. No, we read that. Well, anyway, what we read is that they have no fear. They don't care about the spots. You know what a Christian, a real Christian that loves the Lord, when he gets spotted, he's ashamed. Well, these are spots in your feast of charity when they feast with you, feed themselves without fear. Yeah, without fear. They don't care you they're spotted. They don't care they're spotted. They don't care if you get if they get you spotted. But when you are saved and you get spotted, Lord God, I'm sorry. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, Jesus Christ. Stay with Jesus and you won't fall for these guys. You will not fall. Stay in the Bible and you will not get caught up with these people that we read about. And to present you faultless. None of these faults that we studied in this will come upon if you stay in the Lord. Before the presence of his glory with exceedingly joy. When God comes for you, when you are in the presence of God, you stay in Jesus Christ and you take the warning of being deceived and you don't get to what a glorious it will be to stand before God. And maybe you'll have a crown to wear and cast. But if you fall for these people, you'll definitely lose a reward. You'll definitely lose a crown and you'll be sorry. Exceedingly, not just joy, exceedingly joy to the only wise God, our Savior. Oh, fall that one upon the Jehovah Witnesses. God is our Savior. Oh, remember the last book. I mean, no, remember the second to last book in the Bible, the very last verse we deal with the Jehovah Witness. To the only wise God, our Savior. Capital S, by the way. Now, the English added you in there, but that's okay. Well, be glory and majesty to God and the Savior. Dominion and power to God the Savior. Both now, right now, and ever. Amen. What a warning. And I advise you to take heed to this warning. Be careful who you invite in your church. I would hate to invite one of these. I would hate to be the one that invites one of these people in the church, and within time destroys the church because I was the one that brought the person. Kind of interesting. Everybody who got saved in the Bible was saved outside the group of the, of the Christians. So be careful who you invite the church. That's the warning.